So you bought one of these and now you've realised you want to make it work and you're not sure how to. Watch this video, I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step. Firstly, when you open the box, you'll find there's a couple of instruction booklets. They're worth keeping. They've got things like warranty, registration and stuff. So it's worth you using them and you can read them at a later date. But if you want to find out how to make the thing work, just follow my instructions, which are going to come up soon. The instruction books have got pictures and things, tells you where the buttons are and knobs are and whatever. And they're worth having a look at. But you don't need them to actually install the thing. All you've got to do is plug it in. Now, it does say on here to make sure that you switch everything off before you plug it in and then plug it then switch it on after it's been plugged in this is good advice with all electronic equipment particularly audio it stops all the nasty bangs and pops the unit itself is nice and small it's only about the size of an audio cassette as you can see here the audio cassette actually dwarfs it but it's a little bit thicker than an audio cassette and it only consists of one lead which is the black lead you can see coming out of the thing there and on one end it's attached solidly to the device and the other end has got a USB socket on it, a USB plug on it, sorry. And on there you've just got your four RCAs there, inputs and outputs. You've got a monitor switch to decide whether you're listening to one or the other. And then on the other side you've got a volume control for headphones, headphone jack and an optical digital output. So you can plug that direct into a proper hi-fi system or something that uses optical in and that's it it's nice and neat and small <coughs> we're not talking super expensive hi-fi here we're talking about something like this this is 226 quid and it's the sort of thing people buy nowadays it's got dab and things similar to that as well so this is an av amp and you'd plug into the back here you can see this is quite neat it's got analog input subwoofer output and digital in it's got two optical digital ins and that's where you plug the optical cable that's rather neat. And here we have a Yamaha. Now this one is slightly more expensive and uh, you can see on here it's got a lot more inputs. However, again, there's the ability to put in the optical there. You may have noticed there's two digital inputs on this one, but one of them is marked coaxial and that's a different standard. But the one we're interested in is the one marked optical. I should put up some real audio from this at the end of this video. Back to the proper unit. Neat colours, I think. Nice metallic. Nice. It does feel a bit plasticky, but that's because it is. There's nothing much to it. It's what it does that's important, and we'll get onto that in a second. It's got a nice long lead on it. The lead is approximately six foot long. Um, it's about two meters. I, I wouldn't give you an exact figure because I don't actually have it, but it's, it's longer than your average lead anyway. So I find it long enough to do what I need to do, but obviously it's just, it's just a lead. You can always plug in an extension if you needed to. That's something people forget with the USB stuff. You can actually buy USB extension leads. Very useful. Anyway, let's get on to the next bit. So for this video, I'm going to plug it into an HP laptop. This is my laptop here. And it's nice, standard HP jobby. So having booted it up, I'm now going to plug the USB from the 222 into the USB port. Make sure we get the plug the right way up. And also just going to connect the audio leads onto the audio input, which are the two on the left hand side there. Now I'm going to plug the USB lead into the USB socket, make sure you get the right way up. It just slots in and now Windows has detected it. It's gone bing and that's all nice and simple. Nothing more complicated. Now we'll go onto the main screen and see how this will actually install. It's going to be a different screen picture, but it's the same thing. It's standard Windows. Windows has detected it down the bottom there you can see and that, so we're going into audio settings and that will then take us onto this screen. Now this shows you all the different variations and what we're looking for now is the thing that says that it's the Behringer. Now that's not difficult because there's only a couple of things on there. There we go. Microphone USB audio codec. That would be the one because it considers it a microphone because you see here i've got a stick mic and i've got a webcam and then i've got this one which is the only other thing that's been plugged in so we go into the device and we go look at and device properties and up here you can see we've got on the right hand side advanced properties that brings up this little box now this little box is telling you what it is it's not exactly right but it's telling you what it is so we put in the behringer 
just type it in there so that we know what it is when we're looking at it later because that's the description for it which comes up and this is the same installation for both laptops and desktops so we click on there just to apply it and then we can go and have a look on this button here and it tells you what the various things are so we've got levels and all that that's fine this is the important one this is the one it says that it's a one channel 16 bit and we want it to be stereo because it's a stereo device it doesn't know that until we tell it so you have to scroll down now i'll put it on to the bottom there which is the 48 kilohertz dvd quality and we've done apply and it said yeah that's okay and now that's it done so when we go back now on to the normal audio settings which we'll do in a second boom just like that now it says behringer and up the top there we want to be able to have it going two ways so now we click again it says headphones and it's a speaker usb so it's the speaker usb one we want click on there device properties go into there rename it because we don't want it to be speakers we want it to be behringer so we've put on this one we put sorry speakers behringer click rename if you don't click rename it doesn't hold it it doesn't remember it and then we're over to here now it knows that it's stereo speakers and that's it that's it literally that is now working or will be so what we'll do just to prove it start up audacity and wait for it to come up here we go this is a very useful program for all sorts of reasons and testing sound equipment is one of them so open it up and under inputs select the behringer that we've just called it click on record and it will bring up a stereo trace because it knows it's a stereo device and if we put any signals into it it will record those and this is the sort of signals you get just by feeding in well that was some test signals i had from a, another tape but that doesn't matter you can see there it's going in nice and smoothly that's how you do it once you're up and running you just have to learn how to use audacity or whatever other program you're using it's as simple as that you can't make it any easier if you really try on screen now you've got some examples of stuff that I've recorded using the Behringer and you can see it produces very nice results. Learn to use the program and the software and you're well away. This is a short snippet of Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrickos and you can hear this is recorded at a high level and I think it sounds pretty good. This has gone both ways, it's gone out to the recorder and then back using the same device. As you can hear it works well so if you've got any value out of this maybe you'd like to sign up and subscribe to us or you can click on the like button or do both and uh, you know we'll catch you another time there's a couple of good videos coming up on here so let's keep it simple catch you again bye bye